I'm gonna make a mod to Dinky Steering I should have made months ago, like in the beginning of the summer. Because Dinky Steering is getting like the redneck mower, which was retired for doing this. Alright, it's doing... You know what? That's a good, a good spot there. It's close to doing it there. Sometimes it snaps. It's weakening. And I, uh, when the rear end was locked, I only need about half the turn or double the turn radius I need now or whatever the hell it means. The basically, I need to make that rod stick out twice as far as it does now. I also think I'm going to replace the front axle entirely. The reason why is the front axle that came with the other Craftsman it's in decent shape and it has grease fittings. Dinky does not. I have to take stuff apart when I want to grease it. Although admittedly it does is in a lot worse shape than Dinky's. This tire is a bit off balance because of all the JB weld. Looks like the bearings get worn out in it too. But this guy on the other hand. Going for days. Also uh, this front axle actually has more clearance than this one. Not too often I get to break out the 15 16 and I was playing around the uh, how this should go. And with this perfectly straight, it wants to stick out about here. And if I swing that out over here, oh well, yeah, that's where I'd get to where I need to weld it on. So I've decided I'm not going to replace this as much as I want this to go away. Uh, maybe if I find a cast iron front end or something, I will, but this has to be removed. And I'm just too lazy because this is uh, actually moving pretty freely. I mean, it could be freer, but I think that's enough. So, we're keeping this front end. I do wonder if I should take the angle grinder and cut this off. Alright, I took it off and got it out, and it looks like that this filler piece is missing in here. Uh, which would have explained why this had so much play. Uh, these holes are scarier and dentier on this one. Uh, man, what happened to these guys? Huh? They're pretty bad. But I just really like the fact this one is lower profile than this one. And there's less up and down play in this one. I still may not switch it. We'll see if this thing comes out. Uh, but either way, I wanted to take this off. Because uh, no matter what, one of these is getting cut up and welded on the other one for extra strength. Because I'm sick of this bending. I have to keep bending this thing back and I'm annoyed. In fact, you can see it keeps scraping my pulley. You know what? It might have been a mob. But I remember this one having a far bigger bolt going through it. So maybe it just had a far bigger bolt going through it. Maybe not. I do remember the other one having a bigger bolt. I'm out here barefoot. Stepped on the ground. Thought a uh, thought a bee got me or something. I uh, stepped on this cord which has a rip in it, and it's very wet. In fact, if we had an outhouse, it would be a. Uh, who says you can't clog an outhouse? Apparently, you can. My crampomatic ultra Chinese welder is uh, being a piece of crap. It's not running. Now I got through most of the weld. I was doing a little touch-up stuff, but what? Are you kidding me? I just spent the past like 15 minutes dicking around with this. I'm going to attempt to weld the small little hunk here at my eyes closed. Just see if it does anything. Wow, I can really feel that in my face. I've actually never done that before. Huh. Well, that's a problem I will probably have to deal with in the future, but I've... Before it was these connectors down here, but at this time it was different. The relay was clicking, but it wasn't doing anything. It both would not put out power or turn on the motor. But I heard a relay clicking. I picked the thing up and moved it, and then it stopped. Or stopped not stopping. Stop. Yeah, this water's actually been running good for me for like a year now. I mean, there's a point in time I was spending more time fixing it than I was actually using it, but... It got over the curve and stayed running. And it's usually been a bunch of stupid crap, like really thin wires and bad connectors and stuff, and twice a switch. So I am still keeping dinky stock front axle on the front. So I'm going to take my angle grinder with a chopping bit, and I'm going to chop this bit off here, and that'll be my extension. I've grown really tired, and I'm starting to think uh, my dad woke me up a lot of times last night, but I don't remember it because of how tired I am. Uh, I'm having a really hard time thinking here, and I... Uh... Yeah, I don't like how little material there is there. So I guess I'm going to go cut up some angle iron instead. Alright, now that's cut. And uh, also, I lost the original thing in here, so I got a nut from Tractor Supply. Woohoo. 
Here comes the part I'm gonna hate, drilling a hole. I, I hate drilling holes so bad. It's not easy, and this is gonna be really hard. I should've drilled the hole before cutting the metal. All right, here's our welded connection here. I know I said I was gonna bolt it on, but I didn't, so deal with it. Now, hopefully I did this right and not backwards. If I did it backwards, it'd really suck. I think I did it backwards. Yeah. Wow, I put it on backwards. I welded it and I put it on backwards. All right. That's a, I think that'll hold. <laughs> uh, so I ended up using that piece after all. <laughs> uh, I think it old. It actually looks like I got some pretty decent welds there. It looks really good for a bit there. I'm getting better at using this crappy welder. I can do more than I thought I could. Practice makes perfect. Thing's a piece of... But, it's usable. So I got a problem. This thing's sitting on the milk crate. And I need to get this thing really flipped up. Because when I had it flipped over before... The tie rod went the wrong way, so it ain't just jacking the front end up. But I got oh, no stepped on the cord. I might as well unplug this. By the way, no, that's not as dangerous as it may sound. It takes heart to heart to kill you, and the travel path from that is left foot to right foot, and which does not come close to my heart. Now, as I was saying, I'm going to put the wheel on that side, then I can just tip the thing over and balance a fender on a milk crate, and then I can uh, get under it and still work. I was wrong about being wrong, and I actually need to have done the opposite of what I've done here. This is the uh, thing back as far as it'll go, and so like that, it actually makes my wheels almost straight. And here's only a little bit better. And uh, if we pull this out all the way, well, it actually goes over to these crates over here. And how far would that go with this? That would go over here. So, yeah, I, I, I got to get this right. I'll play with this in the morning. I really hope, or not the morning, after work tomorrow. And I really hope it doesn't rain. Okay, uh, my tie rods are just messing with me. I'm still going to wait until after work to get this. I really hope it isn't raining when I get home. But, yes, yeah, yes, the wheel turned all the way that way. And the turn looks a little less extreme over here. And if we go all the way to that, you see you got that little bit of a turn there, which is probably also amplified by the fact there's no wheel over here. But then we look over here, and that's actually a really sharp turn. That's a really sharp turn. So, I mean, that's more turn than I was expecting turn. All right, I'm home from work the next day. And I just want to go to bed. Let's finish this. You know, it's actually uh, pretty warm and humid today. But it almost just kind of has a fall feel to it for some reason. Something about the day just feels like fall. Okay, never hold a camera you care about close to an angle grinder. Uh, I actually tried licking the metal flakes off the uh, thing here because I knew my tongue would be about the only thing that wouldn't scratch it, but apparently they were so hot they must have been melting the glass a little on impact. Uh, my uh, lens is a sandpapery texture now, which I'm sure is going to hurt its image quality and probably is right now. You know, I was joking with my coworker on the ride home that it was going to start raining as soon as I start working. I'm about 20 minutes into it and it's raining. Uh, that's my final I'm done job. I'm throwing the axle on and that should be good. Guess I'll throw a bunch of grease inside here too. Well, to give you an idea how well that worked out, see the wheel's almost perfectly straight and the logo is centered pushing forwards. So that means I have the full range of movement that I had before just in a smaller radius or I guess a bigger radius since the turning works opposite like that. I have a larger turning radius now which means I have more tor torque per turn, which will save the life of my gearbox. Now, I don't know if I've brought this up other than the video where it actually happened, but these wheels, these rims and these wheels came from a tractor supply. They're like $13 a wheel. They're for wheelbarrows. You can get the replacement bearings there where they have all their other bearings, and they're like $3 a bearing, and then these are car tile power track that were like $25 a tire on eBay. Uh, if you want the exact tires, they're the Carsile Power Track 4.8 by 8 inch, and they fit the wheelbarrow rims of the wheels at Tractor Supply. 
and I, I see I even did the tire change myself and I messed it up real bad. Good tires, good rim. Okay, the rims are actually pretty crappy. If you can save the inner tube, save them because the, that one I had the patch up with JB Weld. But I, I definitely would recommend doing this mod. I mean, it's a cheap way, a cheap alternative to having nice, cutting, big tires with bearings. And the bearings are cheap and replaceable easily. All you do is pound out the old ones, pound the new ones in because I already had a bearing blow up in the end. I was running just an e-clip without a washer. I was going up that rock hill and had a tire blow out. But I, I don't know if I explained that, but there was a video where... Uh, that video where I came home with a different tire, I actually earlier had a friend go to the store and pick me up bearings and I popped in new bearings before my tire blew out. It was a... Uh, it's whatever rim spins the freest. Which neither of these... Oh, my hand. Yep, it's this one. This one's got new bearings. You can tell by how it's moving. It's a little bit stiffer because I just put grease in it and the grease is slowing it down. I greased everything. I haven't bolted the front axle on yet. So I caused something interesting to happen. I shoved the washer up there and I got this bolt really tight. And now the axle's really stiff. It doesn't automatically articulate. And I'll probably have no performance noticeability whatsoever. I would say, hey, maybe I'm less likely to roll, but I don't think that's enough. If it was uh, gonna affect it like that, then I'd have a hard time moving it myself, so. And that's a little hard, but I'm still doing it with one hand. One more thing I'm gonna do today. I'm not going to video record it, but I'm putting my old pulley back on and I'm just using the same old bolt with a new nut and a crap ton of washers and I'm using a lock nut this time, I hope. Should be one in here. There it is. Did not have a lock nut before. Now we're going to have a lock nut instead of a regular nut and a lock washer. There we go. Idler reinstalled. This pulley's bearings are going to blow out at some point. We'll see how long it lasts like this. And at least now, uh, with the way it's set up, to pull these bearings bolt out. And I got my wallet with me. I have two wrenches in my wallet. I should be able to take that bolt out, and I know I can drive around pretty good without it. In fact, the only thing I notice a lack of performance in is my slowdown performance. The thing wants to creep ahead in low gear. I also think I might be able to ju uh, bump start this thing uh, because I can actually move it to the point the engine starts going. <laughs> With, uh, with it in the highest gear, which I guess I should have thought of that because when I'm going downhill, I can turn the engine off and I don't slow down very much in high gear. So like I don't use third gear down a hill. Okay, so yeah, it is way easier to turn the wheel now. Oh, that's the problem I was talking about. That was it right there. I think this is only gonna get me so much life, but it is a mod that needed to be done. And it is about the turning radius I wanted. Because uh, any sharper than that with the locked rear and it didn't really matter anyway. So this is actually perfect. This is right where it needs to be. And I'll get a bit more life out of the steering setup. Only a bit though, and then I gotta do something. I'm not looking forward to that project. Let's see if we can save it for next year or maybe the year after. I'm going to attempt to give you a ride demo. I got sick of those camera glasses and snapped them half and threw them in the trash. Kind of wish I had them, but those things broke too many times. Uh, what I recommend in this mod, as long as you're going fast and you don't need to make really tight turns, absolutely. I would not recommend it for a workhorse, but this feels so smooth, and I feel like I have way more control under high speed. Uh, it's not as scary. I actually love this mod so far. It took me like 10 minutes to get used to it because it handles differently now, but it's better. It, I love the way it handles. And that's that pulley you hear. I guess the suit a full turn is like... Nothing crazy, but I don't need more than that. I might in first gear, but... I won't need more when I go higher. You see how little my wheel actually moves at these speeds. I'm barely moving my hand on the wheel.
All right, I'm about to quit wasting your time, but this is becoming depressing. The yard's becoming more graveyard. There's actually not a single tractor I can run up and just turn a key and it runs. That guy needs a pull rope. Starter's busted. Uh, this guy, I need to put the starter on it. It has fuel pumping issues uh, and the battery's shot. And this guy uh, has a pull rope, but how are you supposed to steer it? Let, huh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, this is so depressing. I know Dinky's like my, my, my big project, but this thing was a pretty big pride and joy too. I was really proud to have this. And I want it to look like a Ford 100 just with my touches. With how tall Dinky is and how fast Dinky is, with the steering how it is, I can easily roll it still. So plenty of steering power. So I left my toolbox closed and out and uh, over there and when it rained a whole bunch like in places flooded and I don't know how my toolbox got like <laughs> like two inches of water in it so everything's gotten pretty rusty so I just took one of my lesser filled oil containers and I just started dumping it all and everything and it'll make my tools suck the ears for a while but it will stop the rust so that's my rust preventative I'll dump it out next summer. And one more, one more thing I would like to add. I have yet to actually try this steering system on a trail. So I may grow to not like it later. But if I ever don't like it, I can always just chop off the end and put the hole back where it was. But I think I'm going to like it because everything just feels so buttery smooth and the wheel is so easy to turn. And you, you feel way less of the kicks when your wheel hits stuff, which is what I expected. I doubled the length of the arm, so all the, all the feedback I get from it, from it should be half, but I can make half as big as a turn. Um, yeah, it, it would be pretty terrible to do this on a workhorse or a rock crawler where you're going slow and you want big turns. But uh, if you've got a speed build or you've got a trailblazing build and probably a mud build too, because it'll, it'll be less stressful in the whole steering system. You're way less likely to bend the, uh, the, the rod that goes from the wheel to the gearbox. And if you've got a gearbox like mine, you're gonna cause less damage to it over time. Because you get, and if you've got a gearbox like mine, it will die. They die, they suck.